Hello everyone, this is Chris with the US Tech Channel. Uh, today I'm looking at a Samsung Galaxy Note 3. This one happens to be on the AT&T. Uh, I use this phone on a daily basis and I wanted to root it, but in the beginning you had to download or downgrade the actual software in the device uh, to be able to perform that function. It looks like now a solution has uh, come up where you don't have to, so you can stay on the, the latest build. Let's go ahead and look at my baseband version. Uh, you can see Mike Juliet 5, MJ5 right there, build number, uh, also Mike Juliet uh, 5, the, the last three characters right there. So I'm going to use uh, Kingo to uh, root this device. There was talk about Kingo uh, sending your IMEI possibly through a uh, server to an unknown location and not many people knew about Kingo or who the developers were. They made a public announcement and they said they would they would fix that, they would stop that in uh, version 2. I don't think there's anything to worry about now. I'm going to go ahead and root my device with it. You can go to kingoapp.com and click uh, Android Root or click the download on this little uh, scrolling uh, bar right here. Another thing you're going to want to do uh, after you download it um, is download uh, Samsung Keys 3 for your device. You can see right here, Keys 3, support models, Note 3, and devices with Android 4.3. If you already have that installed, great. I don't believe I have it installed on this computer, so I'm going to go ahead and click Download and run through the setup. And this is before I plug in the device in. Let me get my micro USB cord ready. I'm going to choose my destination folder. I'm going to accept the terms. I'll leave links to this information in the comments section below. If you have any additional comments, please leave them there as well. If you wonder why I want to root my device, you can leave that information uh, or qu those questions there as well. while we're waiting actually one of the reasons why I want to root my device is so that I can use a, a screen capture, a video screen capture on this so I can um, do reviews of applications and just cut on the screen versus using a video camera and filming it it's a very powerful device I want to see how it um, how fast the screen capture can go. I'm not going to put a shortcut on the desktop and I'm not going to run it. I'm not really concerned with that. Now I'm going to go to the, the Kingo Android underscore root.exe. I'm going to go ahead and run that. Accept the agreement. Install it. Let's go ahead and launch this one. So it's saying that we're not connected. It does note to enable USB debugging mode on the device if unrecognized. Let's go ahead and make sure that is enabled. We'll go into our settings. You'll see later in this video where I forgot to enable developer options in the menu. I'm going to just play this video in its entirety. So in case you come across problems or you're wondering uh, what's going on, you can see the exact process that I went through and how long it took. We're going to go ahead and plug it in. It says installing driver. To restore driver installation, please manually disconnect the USB cable. 
removed a minute worth of waiting. I went ahead and plugged it back in. It says right here, Android 4.2.2. Please take the following steps after selecting your OS version to enable USB debugging on your device. Okay, here's why I couldn't find it. We'll go into settings. About device. Click build number. You have to keep on clicking it. So it's three steps away, two steps away, one step away. Developer mode has been turned on. Let's go back out. Now we have developer options. Now it's what I was searching for. USB debugging. Go ahead and enable that. Click OK. Now that it should have reconnected. I'll click OK. Let me unplug it and plug it back in again. Doing it a second time. Now I'm going to try switching USB ports. This allow USB debugging came on when I tried to switch from media to camera. When I say always allow from this computer, that's what you probably normally would want to do. We'll allow it. Okay. Now I'm going to click OK here on the application. Unplug it once more, plug it back in, allow USB debugging, it's 
says Samsung device, Samsung SM-N900A, normal mode. This is the AT&T version of the Samsung Galaxy uh, Note 3, root status no. We'll go ahead and click root. Does install an app may harm your device. I'll say I understand this app may be dangerous. We'll go ahead and click install. Wow, USB debugging again. The application is checking the root status. I'm going to grant this ADB shell request. It says root succeeded. You'll see that custom logo through a, another way that I'll show you in another video. You can get that to be removed. It says root succeeded. Please reboot your device to make it more stable. And it's already done the uh, reboot cycle for us. At this point, I can disconnect the device. Alright, let me check my device. I've just installed Root Explorer. We'll go ahead and click open. If I mount a read write, should ask for permissions. We'll go ahead and grant. So I was able to do a root function. So root does work on this device. So for more information on things like this, please like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's only through viewers like you that I'm able to take time out of my day and do these videos. So I really appreciate it. Thank you.